How's it going, everyone? It's all you from Weather Sponge. That was today. It's July 18, 2021, and today we're going to focus on the next potential tropical cyclone that has the potential of forming in the Atlantic in the long term future. And we'll also talk about what's currently happening in the Atlantic. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather calls. Make sure to like if you like this video. Make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather calls. So to begin to show you where exactly a uh, uh, tropical cyclone may form in the Atlantic, we first need to take a look at the GFS model, the relative humidity map between the between the where the it, between the layers of the atmosphere where the air pressure is between 400 to 700 millibars and you see all throughout the Atlantic we see a common trend right now that it's currently all dry right now in the mid levels of the atmosphere and pretty much the entire uh, in, and pretty much it goes for the same for all layers of the atmosphere where we're just seeing just a lot of stable air a lot of singing air going on in this region and it's as a result of a positive mjo pattern which is going on which is bringing a lot of singing air and very stable air throughout the atlantic at this point which is why in the near future tropical cyclone development isn't expected at all pretty much since there's too much dry air in the atmosphere and all throughout the Atlantic currently. However, that could change in the future and I do believe there is a good chance that we may see a tropical cyclone beyond let's say five days based off what the GFS and the European computer models are saying. So, so to show you guys what exactly I'm talking about, um, again this is what's currently happening right now, just a lot of dry air throughout the Atlantic but if we move forward um, you begin to see that um, we begin to see a little bit of a plume of moisture that's currently centered right around the equator in the northern South American countries and um, one, and eventually we're going to begin to see that plume of moisture move further northward and when we see moisture like this move into the Atlantic especially when we're almost going to head into the month of August that's always something to be concerned about because a lot because a lot of this convection could could um, become something even bigger and could create a uh, even deeper and more potent low pressure system um, if all, all the conditions are right for tropical cyclone development especially during this time of the year but you see that the plume of moisture begins to move further northward and we see the dry air that's centered um, in the southern Caribbean begin to move out because as you can see there's a lot of dry air in this region just very stable air but that moves further north um, westward and we begin to see the the atmosphere moisten up in the southern um, Caribbean um, I'd say by the time we reach the we reach um, July 20th um, where we, be, we begin to see the air unstabilize just a bit in the southern Caribbean um, in the southern Caribbean and you see that that plume of moisture begins to move northward and it's partially due to the fact that we're going to see a little bit of a weakness in ridging once we head into July 20th and 20 um and the 21st where we're, we're gonna begin to see this ridge this very strong Bermuda ridge move a little bit further eastward and a little bit further northward to the point where we're gonna see just enough weakness in the ridging to where all this plume of moisture that's currently just south uh, that's currently centered very close to the crater um equator at this point will move further northward and i think that could um, definitely rise the chance of some tropical cyclone development in the Caribbean headed into next week and beyond that. As you can see, July 20th, we begin to see a little bit of moisture in the Southern Caribbean. Again, it isn't enough to really um, pose a major threat or a major concern just yet because, of course, this isn't enough moisture and it's far too um, close to land for any sort of tropical cyclone to develop. However, it becomes more concerning if we move even further into the future because if we move into the days of July 24th and the 25th, we're going to see a tropical wave move through the main development region or I should say just south of the main development region and we're going to see just 
um, a lot more moisture throughout the Caribbean Sea overall. And this will extend to the islands such as Dominican Republic, Haiti, um, Cuba, and into Jamaica as well, where we're going to see a plume of moisture eventually move into the Caribbean, I'd say right around July 25th. So around a little bit over or around a week from now, we should see this plume moisture move into the Caribbean by next weekend or this coming weekend. You're gonna, we're gonna see it by the Saturday to Sunday time frame. We're gonna see just a very large plume of moisture and that definitely rises the chance of tropical cyclone formation beyond the five day mark, beyond the seven day mark. Of course, there's still a lot of uncertainty with this and I'm gonna just make it clear that the GFS currently is not really developing anything, um, any really anything that's very potent or anything that's very noticeable, such as a tropical storm or a tropical depression. It isn't really de developing any defined low pressure system just yet. However, just the fact that there is a plume of moisture moving into the Caribbean and we're entering the month of August, which is going to be a very active month which is a very active month in the hurricane season. It's always something of concern when we see a lot of convection in the Atlantic. And it's always at least a talking point and something to talk about, especially when where when there's still uncertainty whether this will develop or not beyond the seven day mark. Because um, when we're talking about something beyond seven days, it it's so uncertain to the point where you can't really know if this won't develop and while the GFS isn't really developing it just yet, there is still certainly that possibility it could develop into a tropical cyclone because again, there's still a lot of uncertainty beyond the seven day mark and uh, just a lot of uh, moisture moving into the Southern Caribbean. If we were to take a look at the wind shear, it might be relatively light by the time we reach July 27 because you see while there is um a little bit of the, while there is a little bit of wind shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere as a result of a small upper level low located in the caribbean you see that a lot of the atlantic doesn't have a lot of wind shear at this time and well and if the and if the conditions are just right for this plume moisture or this tropical wave in the caribbean we could maybe see some tropical cyclone development in the Caribbean by as early as next week, which is something we certainly need to keep in mind and at least be aware of. And in terms of what the European model is saying, it's also agreeing that we're going to see at least some sort of tropical vorticity in the Southern Caribbean by next week. While it again, it isn't really what and again, while the European isn't really developing anything well defined it's still something to look out for, especially when both the computer models are agreeing we're gonna see some sort of cyclonic vorticity headed into next week. And as you can see, moving forward to July 24th um, and then July 27th, you see that there's always gonna be that little bit of uh, vorticity in the Southern Caribbean, which is certainly something to watch. And we and the European model clearly identifies a tropical wave that's going to move through into the Caribbean by next week. And it'll bring at least a little bit of tropical vorticity. Again, it isn't developing it and hopefully it stays that way, but it's at least something to be concerned about. And even if this tropical wave does not develop, there's still plenty of I think other opportunities where some sort of tropical storm could form in this area because like I said there's going to be a plume of moisture so we won't so there's really a large pool where a low pressure system could all of a sudden spontaneously develop somewhere in the Caribbean so it doesn't need to be necessarily this tropical wave to see some sort of tropical storm or a hurricane development in the Southern Caribbean so you guys certainly need to keep a close eye on that and keep that in mind um, in, um, for the Southern Caribbean because we could maybe see some tropical cyclone development into next week as I think the chances certainly do increase as a result of the plume of moisture moving through into the Caribbean. And another reason why it is at least something to be aware of in the Eastern, I mean the Western Atlantic especially the Caribbean, is taking a look at the MJO pattern right now. And you see that as of today, which is July 18, 2021, you see that 
currently a lot of the Atlantic is under the red shades, which pretty much means that conditions are unfavorable for tropical cyclone development at this time, which means that there's less convection overall. There, the atmosphere is a lot more stable in the Atlantic. However, if we move it further and further into the forecast, we begin to see those unfavorable conditions move out of the Atlantic to the point where by week two, which starts as early as July 26, which is a little bit over a week from now, we begin to see um, the MJO pattern pretty much shift for a lot of the Caribbean at this time to the point where tropical cyclone formation could be a lot more favorable since the air will be a lot less stable and we're going to see a lot more buoyancy with the air molecules and a lot of these air parcels in the Caribbean. So certainly something we need to at least be aware of in the Caribbean. I don't, I wouldn't say at all panic yet. There's still a lot of uncertainty and there's still a good chance we don't see any sort of tropical cyclone development, but based off of the shift in the MJO pattern we're going to see in the future, in a week or two, plus the plume of moisture we're going to see in the Caribbean, we could maybe see some tropical cyclone development um, out of that. So make, so however, there's still a lot of uncertainty, but I'll make sure to update you guys once we get more reliable information over in the next several days, once we get closer to that actual time frame into next week. And now moving on into the current five day tropical outlook from the National Hurricane Center. And yes, we do not have any sort of tropical cyclones like um, expected over the next five days. However, the forecast I'm giving you guys is goes beyond five days. So the national, so it's, um, so it's outside of the National Hurricane Center's range of forecasting. So again, there's still a decent amount of uncertainty, but it's, but it's still something to certainly keep in mind in the Southern Caribbean because we could see tropical cyclone development by next week. And taking a look at the current wind shear map, we do see a lot currently strong wind shear in the Caribbean and a lot of dry air, which is making conditions, of course, unfavorable for tropical cyclone development. And if we were to take a look at the Gulf of Mexico at this time, um, while the wind shear is relatively light in the Southern Gulf of Mexico, there isn't really a defined low pressure system to develop under those favorable conditions. So as a result, um, we won't see any sort of tropical cyclone development over the next five days. And taking a look at the water temperature anomalies to keep you guys updated on that, uh, we do see a lot of the Southern Caribbean currently having sea surface temperatures warmer than average, while the Gulf of Mexico and just off the coast of the Southeast um, are experiencing cooler than average temperatures, which is certainly good news because I'll that will pretty much stabilize the atmosphere a little bit in the Gulf of Mexico and just off the East Coast. However, I, I, like I said in my water temperature forecast video, I do expect that to change as we head further and further into the hurricane season once we see the air temperature rise in the Atlantic. But um, in terms of current water temperatures, you see that most of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, pretty much all of it is over the 80 degree threshold. So there isn't really anything that's going to inhibit a tropical cyclone under conducive conditions to develop over this water. And we're beginning to see that water rise further northward as well, where we're, we're beginning to see um, 24 degrees Celsius um, get closer and closer to the northeast. And it's going to be interesting to take a look at that because there is there certainly are possibilities where temperatures could rise up to 80 when it comes to water temperature in the northeast, but we still have to just wait and see on that. Now, in terms of my area of concern, I pretty much listed a lot of the, um, it includes a lot of the Central American countries such as Guatemala, um, the Yucatan Peninsula, and um, so on, but you see that um, the area concern it um, um, could p potentially be a threat to land and I wouldn't at all rule out the Caribbean at this point, but we could see maybe some sort of tropical cyclone development in the future. So I'm going to make sure to update you guys. Um, there's so a lot of uncertainty, but I'll keep, I'll keep you guys tuned in to the latest updates 
that um, that the computer models and the National Hurricane Center releases. But anyways, guys, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather calls. Make sure to like if you like this video. Make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather-related content. Um,